Hi everyone, welcome to Primetime TV Show. We are back in the saddle again with a beautiful Christmas set. Welcome, I'm your host Barbara Marville Kelly and with me is my co-host, Doc, as John calls you, Dennis <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> That's a lot to live up to. I know, right? Yeah. What do you think of our little set here? Isn't it cute? It's sort of cool. It is sort of cool. Yeah, it reminds me of Christmas. I Oh my goodness, it's been a good little while since we've been here. We had a little vacation with some Thanksgiving and uh, turkey and all kinds of good stuff there. And now we're back. My goodness, two weeks. It's Christmas and then it's a new year. The older we get, the faster time goes by. I know, that is the truth. You know, speaking of the older we get, we do have a mantra, in case you haven't heard of it before. It's all about age being just a number. And you know, we have a lot of plans for next year in really sharing with you a lot of the latest in technology, things that we do the research on and, and really hear about the latest and the greatest in ways of helping you live a better quality of life and making it so that it's pretty easy to do. And we're excited about that. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> and I know what you're gonna talk about today. What am I gonna talk the about The many today? benefits of water. You know, we take water for, really take it for granted. And you know, sometimes we wonder why we feel so crummy, why we feel so tired, why we feel so lethargic. And I tell you, my husband has actually done seminars on water for years and years and years. And I think it's time for us to really get up on our soapbox again and talk about it as well for those of you that maybe don't drink enough water. Maybe you think you do, but you really don't. But if you ever find yourself just sitting around feeling like lightheaded and foggy and so many other things that can be as a result of a, a simple hydration and a really serious dehydration, right? Now, actually, the majority of our population suffer from dehydration, mm -hmm. lack of water, and they really don't know it. In fact, when you're thirsty, it's too late. You've waited too long. It means your body's been suffering. A major part of our diseases come from one of the counterparts of that is lack of water, dehydration. Because a high percentage of our body is made up of water. So when we deplete that, our organs don't function correctly uh, and you get diseases like Berry's disease, which is is basically a form of a acid reflex. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, from, from and a being lot of dehydrated. it is lack of water. No kidding. Yeah. See. Because when people take anti-acids and, and drugs like that, when they have this acid reflex problem, if they just drank, drank a couple glasses of water, it would go away in most cases. Now, if it doesn't, then, of course, you go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. But I'd say in 80% of the cases, it could be solved just by drinking more water rather than taking the anti anti-acids and... And stuff like that. I call it stuff like that because to me, all that stuff is stuff. It is stuff. It's, it's not healthy. And, and it's easy to get hooked on that stuff when really our body cries for water. We need water when we're working out. We need it throughout the day. It helps us detox. It helps us lose weight. It helps us burn fat, increase our metabolism. How am I doing so far? Pretty good? You're doing great. You're doing fine. You must have read the book. <laughs> Speaking of the book. We want to give you an opportunity to get this book because we, how long have we had this book by Dr. Batman? Oh, I've had it a number of years. And you know, it's called Your Body's Many Cries for Water. And on the subtitle, it says, You're not sick, you are thirsty. Don't treat thirst with medications. And it's uh, by, we call him Dr. Batman. It's B A T M A N G H E L I D J. He's an MD and he really talks about why we need to drink water and not just any ordinary water. Um, one of the biggest things that I've learned from you and the research that you've done being a sport nutritionist and fitness trainer and you know, carry all these certifications when it comes to the body. And you are a walking example. And, and my husband really does walk his talk when it comes to taking his vitamins, working out and everything way more than I am. But uh, and now don't go there. I was just going to tell you, <laughs> if I don't do it, you promise to kick my butt. That's but, my motivation. Yeah, I know. But, you know, when we talk about water, it's always part of a seminar because it is really critical that we drink enough water. Now, if I remember correctly, you told me that we should be drinking uh, half our body weight in water. Yeah, the minimum eight, six, six, eight ounce glasses of water a day. Mm -hmm. But the key thing is know when to drink the water. Uh, okay, so when That's do we important. drink the water? Well, first thing, first sip of water should be the minute you wake up in the morning. Okay. Because what happens when we sleep all night, our body's dehydrated. 
and it needs water. And what is the first thing we do? We usually go to drink our coffee or mm -hmm. tea. Which is dehydrating. Which dehydrates the body. Mm -hmm. And we never catch up. We start off with a minus and it lasts all day long. So the key is to drink a glass or two upon awakening. Before you have your tea or coffee, and drink a glass of water half hour before you eat your breakfast, and, and two hours afterwards, and an hour before, or half hour before each meal, and an hour after each meal. That's important. Then by the time you do that, it's easy, it's easy to keep track of the amount of water you drink because of the amount of meals you eat. And right before you go to bed, it's important to drink a full glass of water. That can help prevent a heart attack. I'm glad that you went there because I was going to lead you up to that, uh, especially with the holidays, eating a lot of high fat meals with the turkey and the, you know, with the gravy and all the mashed potatoes and all that good stuff that we love and maybe don't eat on a regular basis. But I remember there was somebody that had a heart attack and had eaten a really high fat meal, and I forget who it was, it was one of the celebrities. And we had quite a discussion about that. And in our Tai Chi classes, you always talk about making sure you drink enough water through the night. And why is that? What happens to our bodies if we don't drink enough water and we've just finished a really high fat meal? Well, talk, first let's take the sleeping all night. What happens if you drink a glass of water right before you go to bed, Mm -hmm. then it sort of thins the blood mm -hmm. and the body doesn't get dehydrated because when it gets dehydrated then the heart has to work a little bit harder ah, to pump okay. to be able to figure out ways to supplement that problem we have so drinking that full glass of water is so important and the biggest objection they go well i'm going to have to go to the bathroom more times well would you rather have to go to the bathroom more times would you rather have a heart attack mm -hmm. and it doesn't mm -hmm. have anything to do with age and now going back to eating a large meal if you have a heart challenge, and a lot of people don't know they have a heart challenge, and you eat a very fatty meal, that's why a lot of reasons why people during the holidays, more people die during Christmas holidays than any other time. Part of it's because of stress, the other part is overeating. What happens is the food absorbs the oxygen, fat absorbs oxygen. So you need to do two things, two very important things mm -hmm. when you're, during the holidays, and it's it's really important because we never know when we have these internal problems. We may feel we're in great health, but a lot of times we really don't know there's that hidden monster, I call it. So what happens when you eat the full meal, you want to do t 10 deep breaths. Do a couple deep breaths because you want to replace that oxygen and the fat uses. Do 10 deep breaths and also then drink a gla full glass of water. Now, I recommend inhale to the count of five, inhale th through the nose, exhale to the count of 10 through the mouth, or five and seven if exhaling to 10, to, to the number 10 is too much. And, and that's important because what happens is the water helps thin the blood, it he helps clear the acid reflex, acid reflex problem, and then, of course, with the deep breathing, you're replacing that oxygen, and it could save your life. And it, it's, it doesn't cost anything, unless you're using bottled water. What's a glass of water cost, you know, if it's yeah. going to save your life? It's really true. I know we always have water by our bedside every night, and I notice that sometimes in the middle of the night, I actually wake up and I can feel a dry throat. And that seems to be the perfect breeding ground for bacteria and oh, germs yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, because you don't have the antibacteria saliva in your mouth, you know, the IgA level of saliva. And then, of course, all sorts of diseases can creep in there. But that, that's so very important to realize drinking a full glass of water several times a day at the right time is really important. Half hour before you eat helps with the digestion. Do not drink it when you eat. And then an hour to two hours after you eat, which again helps with the digestion, keeps the body uh, oxygenated because of the water. And of course, I also encompass deep breathing with it several times a day. Those are two things that really are inexpensive. They're priceless. And I always tell everybody, if you don't do any deep breathing now and practice meditation to some degree, uh, oxygen is free at this point, but someday you're going to have to pay for it if you don't, you especially know, if you smoke. That's true. That's really very true. And I'm glad that you mentioned that around the holidays because everybody is under an amazing amount of stress. And that's why this show, we really wanted to help give you some pointers because we'll be off after next week for a couple of weeks. And we want, you know, if it helps one person out there prevent a heart attack just by drinking enough water, 
throughout a 24 hour period. And I know it's not that easy to do. And I know sometimes, you know, you get so caught up. I myself get caught up in doing this and doing that. Then all of a sudden I'm starting to get a little tired and a little groggy. It's all from being dehydrated. Now you say that when you get, when you actually get thirsty, you're already, it's already yeah. too late. You're yeah. already dehydrated. And here's an important point. Most of the times throughout the evening, especially because our body has gotten dehydrated all day long, we have hunger pains, so to speak. Hunger pains actually thirst in disguise. Mm. A lot of times when you're hungry, when you feel like you're hungry, after eating, you want to take some snacks, just drink a full glass of water. Mm -hmm. And mysteriously, sometimes that actually the works. hunger goes away. That actually does work. And it's work. a good thing. It's not a bad thing. But those snacks, 600 calories is the average amount of calories per people that snack or per snack that people use. So 600 calories every evening, that's 3,600 calories mm -hmm. at the end of the week. That's a pound. Yeah, exactly. We're really actually pretty good about not eating that much at night. Yeah, you know, and, and it's good, good not to eat if you can help it after six o'clock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a drink. And if you're going to snack, one really nice snack is is a cup, say a half a cup of raw carrots. Usually, the little small ones are sweet. Mm -hmm. That's a good snack. Apple and slices. Any, oh, very good snack. A little bit of popcorn. <laughs> uh, we won't talk about that. <laughs> organic popcorn with organic butter. Yum. But you're at fault there. I'll be <laughs> sitting there minding my own business, drinking my water, and she come with this bowl of popcorn. I'm supposed to say no, but that doesn't happen too often. No. We can get by with We're it. pretty good. We're pretty good if about that. If you eat right, breathe right, and drink enough water 80% of the time, 20% of the time, you can goof off. Well, you know, you really, it's, especially this time of the year, it's about finding that balance and really setting some intentions for the new year. <clears throat> Excuse me, because that's going to be like right around the corner. We do not do... New Year's resolutions, because that actually just sets us up for more stress. But we will set intentions for the new year on things that we would like to do, like maybe create a new habit for ourselves. And that's 21 days it takes to set set your intention and, mm. and actually According accomplish. According to Dr. Maxwell Maltz, and I agree with him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the, the thing that I recommend, rather than doing a New Year's revolution, a New Year's resolution, uh, Take and and take a couple of sheets of paper and write out all your goals for the year. Yeah. Actually set them up as, as goals, not mm -hmm. as a resolution. Mm -hmm. Because for there's some reason when you make a goal and, and put a time limit on it and, and get excited about the goal and passionate, that's a lot better than the resolution. Resolution is like a weight on our back. But a goal is something you look forward to, something you can excel with, something that can improve you. By the way, I wanted to mention one thing before we finish, is I have people constantly ask me what kind of water to drink. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I can tell you what kind of water not to drink. Tap water. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, positively not, unless your life depended on it. And then there's some that come from the school of the high, uh, of of distilled water. And distilled water, the problem with distilled water, even though there's no, no harmful ingredients in there, no chemicals, it leaches out the minerals from in the body. So what you want is to drink water that's filtered, filtered water. Mm -hmm. And there are some wonderful machines out there now that actually cause the water to, to be PhD and and, and anti-acidic and things like that. I don't want to get into the names of the machine because there's so many machines out there. I know of a few that are superior to the others, but we'll talk about that at another time. Mm -hmm. Well, it is important to have really good clean water and uh, obviously that it tastes good. I know some of the some of the different bottled waters that you get at the store have that just, they just have that funny aftertaste or what have you. But as long as you're drinking water and good water, clean water, and you're trying to find that balance in your life and trying to set a few intentions. And of course, you can never, ever set too many intentions for a good, healthy lifestyle. And it's not something that it, you just do today, maybe tomorrow, next week. It's really about lifestyle changes. Because when you do set those intentions for lifestyle changes, you will be amazed at the various miracles that your body is capable of doing. I just told you the other day that I lost 12 pounds and I've been keeping it off. Part of it was from our mindful eating with Miss Rita when we did uh, just a few months back, we did our, our weight loss pilot study. We're getting ready to do that again in January. And I gotta tell you, it, it just, mindful eating habits. Do you know what that is? Is being mindful. Did I give up my potato chips? Did I? Yes, no, you did. Not all of them. 
except for a few, but not you, all of them. You didn't tell me that. Well, I, that's because I'm being mindful. You must have hit them. I, well, no. Oh, something I want to correct myself before we go any further. Oh. I said PhD. What I meant to say PH. I don't know where the D came out. <laughs> I guess we're talking to we're readers because she's a PhD. Well, we're just new at this. That's all. <laughs> So if I can make a mistake after doing this for years, if any of you out there make mistakes doing something like that, don't feel bad. <laughs> it's, it goes with the turf. It just got to be able to laugh at yourself it and does. say, I'm not perfect. We call my husband the Jack LaLanne of this century right now. Because when we lost dear Jack, I said, somebody's going to have to carry the torch. Boy, that's a heck so, of a burden. That is. I can't replace, replace Jack. No, you can't. But I tell you something. I, I would love to be considered a substitute because that's a remarkable man. And when I met yes. him in the greenhouse, okay. or green room, greenhouse, <laughs> green room. You're really well, I'm good. full of today. <laughs> yeah. When I met, met him at the green room in Home Shopping Network, uh, oh, years ago, mm -hmm. when he was 92 at the time. Mm -hmm. And when I went to shake hands with him, you could tell he's, he's solid. Oh, and he's built a small waist, still really cut biceps and everything. And the funniest thing I, I said uh, to Jack, I said, are you still towing boats with a rope? You know, he used to tow boats I full know. of people with a rope. He <laughs> says, well, I towed my wife through the bathroom this morning. He was funny. <laughs> and that's the kind of guy he was. He was quick, sharp, and everything. Yeah. And I know that he was very, very, uh, he walked his talk, and he was uh, even more so than we are when it comes to health. And I mean, he oh, said, yeah. if it tastes good, spit it out. Yeah, and stuff that was like his that. philosophy. I, I remember that. But, you know, he, he was really one of my mentors growing up, and I exercised with him on the TV and all that kind of good stuff. And it's really interesting that here we are to share some of the little tips that we've learned over the years and we're always learning it like i say it's an ongoing learning experience it's all about life changing methods to live a better quality life the best quality of life i mean who doesn't want to be able to get down on their floor and play with their grandkids or you know go out for a night of rollerblading and still be able to go out and do swing dancing like we're still able to do and you know life is good so it's about really treating ourselves right setting an example for our families my goodness in just a few weeks we've got a a new year coming around the corner. So think about how you might want to feel better next year. Maybe you want to drop a couple of pounds. We're going to give you some tips also on getting through the holidays because, you know, sometimes the holidays can be a little, you know, challenging, maybe a little bit depressing even. There's a lot of joy. There's sometimes a little bit of a letdown. But Rita Milos is going to be coming up in a little bit and talking about different things that you can do. And we'll talk about some of her programs as well. And she's that, a remarkable lady. Oh You'll boy, enjoy she hearing sure from her. Is. We, Rita's been on before. And I love sitting and talking to her because she really, she triggers your, your brain and makes you really start to think. And you go like, huh. I could probably do that. And so I, yeah, I think it's great that, that she's going to be coming up too. But uh, you're going to be coming back next Monday with me, and we will be sharing some other things on uh, recent discoveries on various supplements, ingestibles that can help us clean our cells. And we'll be talking about our life on a cellular level. Yes, the importance of recognizing the importance of keeping the cells healthy. Now, did you ever used to, many years ago, look at the body at the cellular level? Where I learned that is actually in the martial <laughs> arts. Really? Because we looked at the body as an energy uh, field and, and, the, and the vibrations of the body and the good vibrations with good attitude, bad vibration with bad attitude. And that got me curious about, well, what does the cells do? I want to go deeper. Deeper, yeah, yeah, into the cells. And they vibrate. <clears throat> Everything vibrates. So it's getting that vibration at a high level and staying away from the low level. And the easiest way to tell if you're vibrating high or low, and if you're vibrating low, you can't count on a very healthy life. I don't care what you're taking. If you vibrate at a high level, you don't need to take as much and still get the same results. Mm -hmm. Is how do I feel? Every 30, 40 minutes during the day, I ask myself, how do I feel? It can't, you can't think to yourself, oh, I need to talk and think the right thoughts to be positive because you drive yourself crazy. The key thing is, how do I feel? Well, if you don't feel good as far as emotionally, spiritually, why don't I feel good? And then find some way to replace that feeling with a good feeling so you can raise those vibrations. That's a whole other story. Don't get me started. <laughs> we'll be here all day. We'll, we'll touch on some of those things next week, too, because there are a lot of hills and valleys around the holiday times, the good times, the 
not so good times and things like that. So we'll be sharing a little bit of that with Rita. And then next week, we're going to bring, be bringing my husband back as well. Two weeks in a row. All right. How about that? And we're going to be talking about some really neat things. Uh, a lot of breaking uh, technology uh, that I think is pretty amazing, as you were saying, about you know looking at ourselves and really allowing our body to become the miracle. Our body is such a miraculous being that it has such a capacity for healing itself. If we just do the right things and, and feed a little bit more supplementation and just knowing what to do and when to do it, right? Right, and most people actually still suffer beside oxygen deprivation and dehydration. It's called hyperkinesis, mm -hmm. which is lack of movement. And I don't mean movement in the gym, just lifting weights, but movement, body movement, like dancing, like movements. We were meant to move like that. And when we don't, our body works against us. And, and so it's, it's simple things like lack of movement, lack of water, lack of oxygen. You replace those three things and life can be a lot more pleasant. Boy, you're not kidding. And boy, when I was doing the Dancing with the Local Stars, whoa, I was like on whew. I was on like autopilot. You were like a high too. I know, and yeah. I, I have to get back to the dance floor. I will be there very shortly, so it's gonna be exciting. And did you see uh, Arthur Murray has a, their own sh show here? It's on the Ballroom Beat, and that airs on Wednesdays at 5.30, is it, John? Or yeah, Wednesdays That's an incredible show. I really enjoyed watching it the I other know. day with you. Oh, that was great. Everybody was having so much fun. Well, and, you know, fun, that's a good medicine. It is. It is <laughs> very good. Best. And it's all being brought to you through WeBeam TV, just like our primetime TV show is. And you'll be hearing more and more about WeBeam TV. If you ever want to have your own show, just get with us here at WeBeam TV. We'll be happy to uh, tell you how that works and everything. If you'd like to be a sponsor during our commercial break, you can also do that if you have a business or a service or a product that you would like to share, just let us know. We're going to take a brief time out. I am going to release you. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> it's good to be really <laughs> like somebody that just got out of the zoo. <laughs> okay, monkey man. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to come back next week. I will see you next week. And you're going to release me next week. And I'll, re <laughs> I'll She's bring cleaning you. my cage. <laughs> So I will see you in a little bit, and after the break, well, we're going to bring Rita out, and we're going to be talking more about little different tips and things that we can do during our Christmas season, Hanukkah season, any holiday that you have a lot of stress, and just, we're going to just sit Don't back go and anywhere. Relax. You don't want to miss this. No. We'll see you back, and we'll see you back after the break. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. This is one bee that loves going to the dentist because it's made for you and me. My name is Dr. Bezerra from New Tampa Pediatric Dental. Providing a comfortable atmosphere in early dental care gives kids a great start for healthy teeth and gums for life. When I go to Dr. B, they don't do anything to hurt you. I used to be afraid, but I'm not now. I'm not afraid of the dentist anymore. I love to see Dr. B. Call New Tampa Pediatric Dental today. Hi, I'm Derek Brooks, former linebacker for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. During my NFL career, I realized the importance of giving back and started my foundation, Derek Brooks Charities. We help Tampa Bay youth prepare for a successful life through our college prep and mentoring programs. Our goal is to see youth excel academically and develop strong characters and be better citizens for tomorrow. To further our mission, we've teamed up with Fun Night a company that gives members access to thousands of nationwide discounts on products and services they buy every day. These include entertainment, retail purchases, dining, and travel. Best of all, 33% of every membership fee goes to the charity of your choice. We love being able to save our supporters money while giving them a unique opportunity to support our charitable work in the community. 
I invite you to consider using Fun Night to save money and get back to your favorite cause. Visit www.funnight.us to sign up now and get a free 30-day trial. Save money, help others with Fun Night, and support Derrick Brooks Charity. This is one bee that loves going to the dentist because it's made for you and me. My name is Dr. Bezerra from New Tampa Pediatric Dental, providing a comfortable atmosphere in early dental care. Gives kids a great start for healthy teeth and gums for life. When I go to Dr. B, they don't do anything to hurt you. I used to be afraid, but I'm not now. I'm not afraid of the dentist anymore. I love to see Dr. B. Call New Tampa Pediatric Dental today. that loves going to the dentist because it's made for you and me. The environment here is really kid friendly, family friendly. The parents are welcome to watch. It's definitely been a different atmosphere since Dr. Becerra has come on. Um, it's very inviting and welcoming. The children just enjoy coming here all around. My middle son did not like to come to the dentist, but now he loves to come to the Beehive. You don't have to be afraid to go to the dentist. Call New Tampa Pediatric Dental today. Everyone's story is different, so why be limited to just one or two options? With Norcom's Norflex Home Loan, you're given the flexibility to tell your story. Pick your terms from 8 to 30 years, all while maintaining a low, fixed mortgage rate. You can pay off your loan more quickly or choose a term based on your budget and timeline. Whatever you do with the Norflex Home Loan, make it part of your financial plan. Norflex. Short term. Long term. Your terms. Apply online at NorcomMortgage.com. Hi everyone, welcome back into Primetime TV Show. I'm your host, Barbara Marville Kelly. Great to be with you. And as I was talking before we took our break with my husband, Dennis Kelly, we were also talking about Rita Milios mm -hmm. coming back again. You, this is what, your third or fourth time with us again? Yeah, I can't remember. It might be three, I'm not sure. The Mind Mentor yeah. is what Rita is known as. Mm -hmm. uh, you happen to be a psychotherapist and very successful uh, in your Thank own you. right Thank in the you. area. And I was just saying how I love this book. I absolutely love this book. It's called Transformation, Tools for Transformation. And you know what? You did such a fantastic job on this, keeping it as a simple read. It's not a real long read, but it's very powerful for somebody that wants to really transform their life and make some different changes by using some of your tips and tools here. So I really appreciate that. If you want to get that, uh, we'll give you Rita's address and everything here in just a little bit. But give us a little overview on, I, we talked about this before the show. Mm -hmm. The holiday season can be challenging. It's fun, mm -hmm. it's festive, it's about parties and food, getting with family and friends and more family and friends, some crazy family, some crazy <laughs> friends, and goodness knows, sometimes mm -hmm. you just never know what's going to happen. And, you know, people do go through their, their trying times mm -hmm. and through a little grief and bereavement. Maybe they've lost someone around the holidays. What, what can you say to help us through those those challenging times a lot of stressful times yes even though the holidays are really an exciting time a lot of times it comes down to um, just doing too much like Kelly was saying um, not paying attention to watching out for your body uh, taking care of your needs but also really it's about expectations um, most of the time we have in our head a fancy Christmas that we want to be perfect. Um, we have memories, we have um, nostalgia. And I think, I was thinking about it on the way down today. I thought, you know, why do so many people feel like they have to live up to an expectation? I think it's because of those childhood memories. And when we were children, um, the point is, Christmas was done for us. Yeah. You came down the steps and went under the tree and got your presents, yeah. and that was your only job. Yeah, why can't we do that now as adults? <laughs> but you know what? My sister said it great one time. She said, you know, Christmas is wonderful for kids because all they have to do is enjoy. But somebody's got to make it happen. Someone has to put the tree up. Mm -hmm. My husband was out yesterday putting the lights up. 
and um, somebody's got to do the shopping, somebody's got to make the dinner, somebody's got to do all this stuff. And when it's us, it sort of interferes with our expectation. Well, this was supposed to be fun, and I'm tired, I'm stressed, I got you know too much going on, you know. And, and you go out to shop, and and the idea you want to get gifts for your friends, you want to you know share, and then you go into the store and like I don't care, just let me find something for Fred, <laughs> let me find you know whatever it is, I don't care. And that's really not the spirit right. of what it was about. So, right. you know, it's expectations that we have in our head. And like I tell my clients, all life is lived in your head and you own that space. <laughs> so, so if those expectations aren't working for you, just change your expectations. Right. It does not have to be a certain way. Right. So, so give us some ideas as far as expectations, because I, ha I have a true confession. <laughs> okay. I really do. <laughs> I can't tell you how many years I put up the Christmas tree. I decorated the Christmas tree. I detangled the lights to the point of ad <laughs> nauseum. Yes, yes. I don't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so I put up, I get a Norfolk pine, mm -hmm. which is a real tree. Yes, yes. And then I have that throughout the year, which mm -hmm. keeps the memories alive. And I put oh. little red bows and, and little, I drape pearls on it and make it very Victorian and very pretty. Is that okay? Is that okay oh, for know, me to do that? Oh, of course it That's is, That's my Barbara. expectations. Of course I'm it so is. guilty not putting up a tree anymore. No, no. You know, it, it's whatever works for you, really. Thank you. You know, it, it should be whatever works for you. This is the first year that um, for both Thanksgiving and Christmas, we don't have any family that we're getting together with. Oh. My son just moved back to Toledo, our old ham hometown. Oh. My daughter is in Texas with her two children, and we normally see them, or sometimes, you know, we'll see another relative at Thanksgiving. Giving and then we go to Texas for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Well, this year we're going after Christmas because we're going to meet them at a ski lodge for their vacation. Oh, how fun! So we're we're gone. We went through Thanksgiving and then we, you know, are going through Christmas alone. And it's kind of a little bit different and a little bit sad in a way. But I thought, no, you know, it doesn't need to be. Um, right. You know, they have their little nuclear family now. My daughter with her two kids, and that's when things change. They want to have their own little family. Right. And in the beginning, I remember um, I still love my husband after 45 years, oh, and I still. Well, that's good. <laughs> so it's like when we were first together, it was just the two of us. And I thought, well, it's just like in the beginning with just the two of us. What did we used to do? Well, we went out on Christmas Eve because we didn't have toys to put under the tree. We didn't have children to, to set things up for. So we went out to dinner on Christmas Eve. So I said, honey, guess what? We're going out to dinner on Christmas Very Eve. Very good. <laughs> kind of like going back and having a second honeymoon yeah, here. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I can relate to what yeah, you're saying. So this, just adjust. I, you know, that is it because for many years my kids would come over you know christmas mm -hmm. for the day you know as adult kids yes. and this is the first year that we're now going to their nuclear family yes. because you know they yes. want to have their kids open up their yes. their gifts in yes. the morning so we're going to be going there we're going to pack up the dogs and our family and go there oh, that's wonderful we, and it's and i'm looking forward to it mm -hmm. they you know they came down for thanksgiving for us and it's you know it's so great the way you say how it's it's a mindset and you own everything that's going on in, yes. in, in here. Yes. And Rita was the gal that I was telling you about that, um, and we'll talk about this coming up here next year, which, which is your uh, mindful eating and mm -hmm. your uh, weight loss pilot study and everything. And there's so much to be said for just mindfulness, period. Never yes. mind mindful eating, but believe me, <laughs> when, you, anything. when you do mindful anything, <laughs> I know when I was working uh, at at uh, the studio and, and selling as a host for the Home Shopping Network and very stressful, but I loved it. I loved my viewers. I still love my viewers and everything, but it was really nonstop, nonstop. And, mm -hmm. and there were times where I'd think to myself, I think I just like a mindless job, like a filing job you know I don't even have to think of, or something just really mindless but for I, about five minutes yeah for about five minutes and then give me back to all the really stuff that makes life interesting and fun and exciting exactly so when it comes to these times so we're both going through the mm -hmm. changes and maybe you are as well but these are also times where you know we miss our family we, yes. we miss those have who have crossed over they're mm -hmm. not with us here only in spirit and everything what can you say to those of us that who maybe have lost a loved one and, you know, trying to get through these tough times? Yeah, it, it is really tough in the holidays, especially the first holiday, the first everything, the first birthday they're gone, the first holiday, the first, you know, um, anniversary of the death. All of those firsts are really hard. 
I don't know if you know, I used to be a hospice bereavement um, counselor. When I first moved down here to Florida, really? I spent four years being what you call a complicated grief therapist, which means grief that is not resolved in the quote normal way. Um, and it's prolonged or it's serial grief where you had multiple deaths or something that's a little more complicated. And I, I, at first, like everyone else, I didn't know a whole lot about grief. And I told, I remember I told my boss the first day, I said, what do I say to these people? I don't know what to say. And that's pretty much the, the, the biggest thing is that people don't know how to interact and, mm -hmm. and they feel uncomfortable talking to someone who has lost a loved one. And especially at this time when everyone else seems to be with family and mm -hmm. doing things with loved ones, right. uh, someone who has lost their loved one and they're left out, it's, it's, a, it's an even more difficult time for them. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share a couple of little tips that you can help a uh, person who is bereaved, who's lost someone. And, and I call it um, sort of lovingly, be a bereavement buddy, not a bereavement Aww. bully. <laughs> and, and I say bully because inadvertently, a lot of times people, because they don't know what to say and they're unsure and they're uncomfortable, they say things that inadvertently make the person feel worse. And I've had so many clients who came and said they felt like they had to tend to the emotions of the person that was talking to them, trying to make them feel better because they knew that mm -hmm. they didn't know what to say and they said something wrong, kind of put their foot in the mouth. And so the bereaved person was in, okay, that's okay, honey, don't worry. And they still hurt inside. Still, yeah. I remember I went to a networking meeting last year and it was, it was quite interesting because the fellow, he was about 40, 45, he was in his 40s. And we were talking about that particular issue, and he remembered an incident when he was in his 20s that someone had said something very innocuous like that, like, um, oh, they're better off, or um, at least they don't suffer anymore. He was still angry about that 20 years later oh. because that was not helpful to him mm. and that was sort of he felt like it discounted his feelings and and said oh don't worry about it it's okay that's not something that's helpful if you don't know what to say especially when you first are interacting with the person after the death the best thing to do is to just go over to them hug them if you're you know close relation um, touch their hand put your hand on their shoulder whatever is appropriate for your relationship and just say to them very sincerely i am so sorry for your loss that's all you need to say mm -hmm. and then after that if you want to say to them something like you know i'm here for you um, just let me know what you want um, if you want to talk if you want to just have someone sit with you if you want to have someone around i'm here for you and then <laughs> Instead of just waiting for them to call you, a couple of weeks later, a few months later, especially after things have died mm -hmm. down, you know, once mm -hmm. the family goes home mm -hmm. and all of the um, mourning time is over, that's when people really get lonely. And after the holidays, they would mm -hmm. probably be lonely in January again. Um, so, you know, call them up and just say, hey, would you like company? Would you like, you know, this, that? And I like to say, <clears throat> make it... Um, Make it an invitation, but not an obligation. Mm, so that yes. you say, you know, if you so feel like it, mm -hmm, then, mm -hmm. you know, we can do this and so, but don't feel like you have to, because again, you don't want them to feel like they're letting you down. Um, a couple of things I think I learned when I was doing this, uh, because I did a holiday grief workshop every year because mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was an important thing to get um, certain ideas across, is that when people, um, go to gatherings where the loss is very evident. You're going to the family and dad's not there or, you know, aunt's not there. You know, you're missing the person. It's sort of like the elephant in the room. What do you do? So ask the person who's the most involved, if it was someone's mother or father, whoever, you know, they're the most important person. Their feelings trump everybody else's. So let them say what they want and say, how would you like to handle this? Would you like to have something where we honor them, you know, light a candle, say a prayer, do this, do that. Mm -hmm. And then you do that little ceremony and then you say, okay, everybody now take a deep breath, you know, um, and let's turn our attention to having a good time and not feel guilty about having fun. That's nice. Just, I just like that. On. That's just is so approachable. Mm -hmm. that I, I feel good just hearing you say <laughs> that because it, it's like it makes the person feel more comfortable and more open and 
not really committed, but know that you care. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and again, um, letting them take the lead and, and always have an out for them. Like say, if you feel like you are uncomfortable, sometimes somebody says something, you see an object that reminds you of the person and all of a sudden they just want to cry. They don't know that that's going to happen. So say, you know, if you need to be by yourself, I've set aside my bedroom, you can go in there and I'll close the door. I'll tell everybody you'll be back in a little while. And don't worry about, you know, you can leave the scene mm -hmm. if you need to. Mm -hmm. So just, just if they know they have an out, if they know they're not going to be expected to stay there the whole time, and um, maybe, you know, if they weren't able to drive themselves, say, well, you know, myself or my husband or whoever will be happy to drive you home if you need to leave, you know, during the middle. Um, it gives them options that they can feel like, yes, I can take part in this, but it's not going to be overwhelming. I can yeah. control the situation mm -hmm. so that my feelings... Um, I can, you know, manage if I need to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that feeling of overwhelm is overwhelming. Yes. I mean, it really is. Yes, and exactly. it's, you just like want to just go crawl in a corner somewhere. So mm -hmm. that's really helpful. Thank you, Rita. You're welcome. That, that's good. And, um, yeah. you know, we all go through it. And yes, so, it's a part of life. <laughs> and, and, you know, yeah. you, you never know how, how you're going to mm -hmm. react to certain situations. But exactly. if, if this helps you or you know someone that maybe is going to be going through that this holiday season, regardless of what your holiday is, or even every day. These are really some great tips, so I thank, thank you, you for sharing that. That was worth having you come on, just oh. that little piece alone. Thank you. You're working on some other uh, workshops mm -hmm. and seminars, my goodness. I, I mean, you're just like doing so much. Um, you're teaching the Course in Miracles class. Yes, I Tell am. Tell us about that and where you, it's over uh, at the Wonder Center. It's, it's over Center? at, um, uh, Heaven and Earth. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'll just be new quiet. Beginnings, new beginnings. New beginnings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm having a, I'm having a, a See, Kelly moment. It's, it's catchy. <laughs> <laughs> New Beginnings Oneness Center. Sorry, Mary Lou. <laughs> That's Mary Lou Hulis. Hi, Mary Lou. <laughs> yes, New Beginnings Oneness Center in Tarpon. They just mm -hmm. moved there recently. It's an absolutely beautiful new center. And on Monday night at 7 o'clock to 8.30, I'm, I'm teaching, facilitating uh, with another lady, uh, Donna Mal Maldovan. Um, she's, um, a Course in Miracles, experienced person even more so than I am. Um, and um, we co-facilitate together tonight. She's not going to be there, but um, a lot of times she is there. And uh, we're going through the book, and people don't have to be on the same page. We're not going through it rote together. Um, people can read at their own pace, because The Course in Miracles is really a study book, mm -hmm. a self-study book. You mm -hmm. just study it yourself. And so um, every evening, if people come in, and, and we talk about a passage that may have had significance for them, or they may have had a question about, or they just want to discuss. And then there's some exercises also in the book that we can do together. And it's been very enlightening, and people have been enjoying it so far so I'm, I'm very um, honored to have been asked to facilitate that that's wonderful yeah. now a lot of people know what the course of miracles in but for somebody that might not know what course of miracles can you give us some bullet points and how it can maybe help transform their lives Yeah, the, uh, the course of miracles was um, introduced about I think the 70s and um, it was an interesting story because it was a psychologist who um, really did not have a lot of spiritual background and she was having um, communication and, and relationship issues in her little um, place where she worked and she mm -hmm. kind of got fed up and sort of put out the intention and the thought and the request um, can't we have a better way is there some better way and she began to get what we call channeling which means that some spiritual guiding source was inputting downloading into her brain information and so she started writing it down and it became the Course in Miracles and um, not everyone will, you know, understand this, but as it went by, it was revealed to her that the author who was um, dictating to her was Jesus. And what he said in the early writings was that this book was in his intention to correct some mistaken beliefs that had been ingrained in the religious system. Mm -hmm. And most of them had to do with... Um, things about um, God being vengeful and, and people suffering and, and you know, um, that life was about suffering and resurrection was about um, suffering. But basically he was saying that, you know, there's only two 
options, love or fear. Mm -hmm. And so this is really cool because the, one of the big tenets in the book is the same thing that I say, is that, not in so many words, but life is lived in your head. <laughs> and True. basically he said that perception is everything mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that the reason that we live in Earth's life, it, he said that really there is nothing except we create it. You know, mm -hmm. like we create in our own heads, our own little world, and we co-create together the world around us. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that from a larger perspective, and you've got to really get you know your mind stretched out a little bit from a quantum physics perspective and a larger real perspective this world does not really exist in the way that we know it it's really mind created and that's a really mind-blowing thing that is but it's it's very much a big part of the book is that um, you have to watch your thoughts and your perceptions because that is what gets you your life you know mm -hmm. you, you have a thought you have a perception you have a belief you uh, feel certain ways, you expect certain things, you act upon those expectations, certain things happen because you acted that way, and you get consequences because of the thoughts and the beliefs that you had. So again, we're very uh, much back to being responsible for what you hold in your head and um, being mindful of that because it's going to create events and circumstances and it's basically going to create your life if you don't like your life the way it is now change your thoughts and your life will change that is so true and um talking about the two emotions i've heard my husband say that for years and years and years and he too studied the course of miracles oh, really? only two emotions love and fear mm -hmm. and you know what who wants to live in fear because that just ricochets all these different reactions not responses but reactions that can be in such a harmful negative way with yourself, with your family, with friends, co-workers and all that. I would much rather live with love. When you stop and think about this whole crazy world, if we all lived in love, mm -hmm. imagine what we could all do in exactly. living love in the heart. But when mm -hmm. we live from fear, mm -hmm. false evidence appearing real. Oh yes. And that is yes. so darn true. Yes. And you know, perception is truly everything. And, and just that little that little catchphrase that you said, false evidence appearing real, it, it's really what the Course in Miracles says is that the whole idea is for you to learn that these fears are self-created and they're not real at all. They're only perceptions. You created them and they have no substance, no reality. They don't have to be there. Exactly. So and cool. you can change that. Yes. When yes. I was first starting my personal growth and development with Norman Vincent Peale and Chad Helmstetter, mm. do you remember the book called Choices? No, I don't. Oh, I, my book is so old that it's actually yellow with uh, age. Uh. But I learned so much from that book, Choices. And we do have yes. those choices mm -hmm. to change what's going on up here mm -hmm. and just live a better quality of life. We started the show out talking about living a better quality of life. And it's just hard to, I guess for some people, I know as I was going through my ups and downs in life, mm -hmm. it was all about was what was going up here but once I learned how to live from here, it all it just changed. And yes. there's more love than fear. And it's just and that's oh, wonderful. It is. It, it really is. is. And it you're really doing is. so so many wonderful seminars and, and getting back to the body mm -hmm. and the whole mind spirit, that whole mm -hmm. entity. It all works in conjunction with one another. Now, so the Course in Miracles is once again on it's Monday night. Monday night. It's, um, <coughs> seven to eight thirty. Seven beginnings, one to center in Tarpon Springs, Florida. And is there a love offering or something yes, for that? Yes, uh, the suggested love offering is seven dollars. Wow. Yeah. That's that's because the new center um, is larger, and and we you know um, appreciate everything that people can bring. But that's a suggestion. That's wonderful. Yeah. I need to get over there. I know Mary Lou did a fabulous it job. It's absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to see the it. The energy is wonderful. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. Absolutely. And yes. then with the amazing women with Sherry Kistler. Mm -hmm and all the girls there, it's all yeah, great. It's good. Now, we have a couple of other things we wanna mention. We have about 10 minutes left or thereabouts in our show. Um, you are doing the Cancer Thriver Support Group. Tell us about that. I'm um, just announcing it and um, hoping to get it started in the first of the year. Um, 
I myself am a cancer thriver, as I call it. I, I always hated the term cancer survivor. It sounded like you were just near death and here you're surviving mm -hmm. and like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm so happy I survived. I did not want to label myself with that. So I thought, well, what else can I say? And someone told me this, I have to admit, this was not my creation. Someone said something about a friend of theirs like to call herself a cancer thriver. And I said, well, like I'm stealing that, that one. I like that. <laughs> I'm taking yeah. that one. So um, my... Um, Mindset about that is, you know, I know how it feels. Being a psychotherapist, um, it's interesting because I was, you know, in my younger years and in, in my teens and, and early 20s, I did have some depression. But now I'm a lot, you know, beyond that. And I haven't really felt those emotions for a long, long time. And, um, you know, in treating people, it's kind of like, you know, um, you sort of go back into memory. Okay, let me remember how that feels so I can help you. But actually, when I finished my chemo and was getting my body back together, because mm -hmm. for me, chemo does different for everybody. For me, it was so physically debilitating and draining of energy that literally I could not walk across the room. I was so embarrassed when I would go to the store, I'd have to sit in those little, little carts and drive. And I know my husband was embarrassed, but I literally could not walk across the room. I, I was so depleted and it took, a long, it took almost two years to get my my physical energy back and during that time I was depressed and I was thinking I was racking my brain uh, like why am I depressed I thought it had to be physical you know it had to be an emotional some kind of you know um, mental thing and I finally realized there's nothing left here to work on the emotional the mental or the spiritual all of my energy is going to go to repairing this physical because I had used up what I call my reserve tank when, when you're so depleted and so down that you're using up what mm -hmm. should be your reserve and, sure. and you're dipping into that then then it's going to take a while to get back mm -hmm. and there really is one closed system physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual draw from the same pool of energy. Everything was depleted, so until I got that back, I was depressed. And so what I want to talk about in the Cancer Thrivers group is how to lessen that uh, chance of depression, how to maybe move through it quicker. And fortunately, um, I didn't have them at the time, but now I have tools, and I wish I did have them at the time. Like you talked about ingestibles and, and mm -hmm. nutritional mm -hmm. things that have really helped me come back in the last year or so because I was lingering a little bit with tiredness and taking sure. a nap and this sure. and that and the other. Mm -hmm. And now, as you said, I'm doing more than I ever was before. There was a time when I thought, well, I don't know if I'll ever write again. I don't know if I'll ever you know, see clients again. I don't know if I'll do whatever. So that's a, you're a walking and I'm, miracle. I'm back you're a miracle. to more than I was ever doing. That's amazing. So there are physical um, ways you know, that I would like to share, things that I've learned, um, emotional, and just you know, kind of helping people um, get back into to life again. There's a lot of support groups for people who are going through treatment, mm -hmm. but once you're done with treatment, it's kind of like, okay, you're okay. You, know, you don't need anything, mm. but we still do need, we need support oh, and that's guidance. Yeah. That's that so really good. So my intention is a local group mm -hmm. and also to do like an online blog. And um, I, I want to have, this is something I thought of, and I, I want to have like connector kind of things with people on the blog. And I think for people with breast cancer, which was mine was, I'm gonna call it breast buddies. <laughs> I love it. I love, I I love, love little, it. I, I love, love names it. and taglines. Oh, that's cute. And if you didn't have breast cancer, we'll come up with another name for your buddy. Right. But when I was going through my, my uh, chemo at the beginning, I called up some lady that the doctor said she wouldn't mind talking to me, and I asked her questions, like, okay, what about the wig, what about this, what about that, things that you wouldn't want to ask the doctor. Right. And then someone called me uh, after my treatment, and I was able to help them with the questions. And uh, like, you know, one of the big questions with us women is always, when are my allies just going to drop and grow back in? <laughs> you know, you want to know those things. And so um, everyone... Um, having someone who's been through it to talk to them and say, hey, you can expect this, you can expect that, you can expect the other. This is, you know, kind of what you can maybe feel. This is how long this is going to take. And a little bit of like, hey, I made it through and you're going to make it through too. You know, to have mm -hmm. someone who's mm -hmm. been there um, to call and um, maybe chat on the phone just once. That's all it really takes. And, and, and I thought I that would be a good that. thing. Yeah. Oh, I think that's yeah. going to be marvelous. And you're going to be starting that next year. Yes, I'm, I'm planning on starting that next year. Again, both local group and then an online group. Okay, perfect. <laughs> That that is really nice. Thank you. Really nice. You're so well rounded, and you're reaching out and giving back like never before. And I think it's wonderful. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. We also have the mindful eating pilot study that you're going to be doing. Uh, mm -hmm. Rita did this last year. We only have a few minutes, and I want to make sure we give your phone number, address, and everything. Um, last 
well, no, this year actually, we did, was it October? Was it September and October thereabouts? Uh, it might have been, yeah, it might have been because we talked about doing it after Christmas, <laughs> which was mm -hmm. like three months after. So probably mm -hmm. was September, October. And so Rita um, put together a program, a protocol for mindful eating and a weight loss pilot study. And you're going to be starting that again in January. Mm -hmm. And so That's if you may be interested, it's with all natural, mindful, and now normally there's a cost for this, correct? Yeah. Well, my mindful eating um, hypnosis for weight loss program um, I've done for several years, and that was normally $120, and we did six, week se six weekly sessions. Mm -hmm. But with this pilot study, we're working with another woman who has some nutritional mm -hmm. products, which have been very helpful, extremely helpful for me, mm -hmm. and it really does help... Um, advance the weight loss. Those will be uh, optional and people can either do just the mindful eating or they can do the mindful eating with the uh, supplements. For this study, I am foregoing my charge for the mindful eating um, portion, which I do with um, the hypnosis guided imagery. And um, that will be for free. And of course, if people want and choose to opt in to the supplement portion, mm -hmm. then that will be something that they will purchase on their own. So we're comparing the two different um, ways. And we did find, as we sort of expected, that the people who use the supplements um, got better, um, more weight loss results than um, the people who didn't. Mm -hmm. and, well, that uh, was, uh, I was telling you that one of the supplements that I've been taking and I'm still taking, I swear, that's the only thing that I did different and I've been able to maintain my weight loss, plus able to detox. And you know, the one thing is knowledge. If you know why you gain weight, why you hold on to weight, one of the things that I learned was the fact that uh, fats and toxins bind together. So if you detox and get rid of the toxins, watch your stress level, do your deep breathing, drink a lot of water, <laughs> and you can really make a difference with weight loss. Mm -hmm. And I love when you did the, um, the guided imagery, that was just mm -hmm. wonderful, and really walked us through mindful eating. Now, I kind of like talked myself into that before I heard you, mm -hmm. but you validated it because I thought, I really don't want to eat this whole entire bag of Lay's potato chips. Even though it's lightly salted, you know, less sodium and everything, I've been known to eat a whole bag of potato chips and I thought, wait a minute, I don't want to deprive myself. Mm -hmm. And That's when you key. said, when you said, mm -hmm. savor the flavor, eat two or three and just enjoy it and then roll the bag up, and you know that works. Yes. It actually works instead mm -hmm. of mindlessly sitting there eating the whole darn bag. Yeah, that, that's the sad part is most of the time when we're eating mindlessly, we're not really enjoying mm -mm. and, and we're, we're losing the whole benefit of it. But when you eat mindfully, you really pay attention. Mm -hmm. And I mean, years ago, and I can still do this, I, you know, I don't do it as often, but years ago, I could eat two M&Ms and I could savor those things for 10 minutes. You know, wow. just, you just, you know, slowly suck off the candy <laughs> part and then when the chocolate comes in, it it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could get more out of those two M&Ms than some people get out of an entire large bag. Sure. And that's mindful eating. And, and what you mentioned about deprivation is a key to the thing. Uh, our minds are not set up um, to want us to deprive ourselves because that is suffering. And our inner self is going to say, you don't deserve that. And rightly so. It's protecting you. Mm -hmm. So we need to do a non-deprivation type of thing, which mm -hmm. is what mindful eating does. That really, that really, really works works. Thank you. And I, I tell you, it, it, it was like validation because I, I, I'd, I'd try to overthink everything as I usually do. I guess I'll never change, but I, I would think, how can I allow myself to have what I'm thinking I probably shouldn't have? Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, let me really scope this out. And that's when I came up with just don't eat the whole bag of chips. Yes. Don't eat the whole bag of M&Ms. Mm -hmm. And then that way, it's like you're justified because yes. you know you're not going to gain a whole ton of weight. Mm -hmm. And you know, the funniest thing is, is that I found myself wanting less. It's Isn't funny. That interesting? It's like you give yourself permission. <laughs> yes, the permission. Like, ah, I don't really yes. want it. But it's like anything. When you're told you can't do mm -hmm. something or you can't have something, you want it more. Yes, it's kind it's of a, that, that this is a psycho thing going yeah, on. Yeah, that up mindset, here. yes. <laughs> well, the mindful eating is a local thing. So here um, in Florida, um, 
Hudson, Newport, Ritchie, mm -hmm. Tarpon Springs, mm -hmm. this, this whole area. And um, we'll be announcing where the location is as we figure out how many people we have, uh, maybe at your place again. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we'll find out. So anyone who wants to take part can email me at ritamilios at tampabay.rr.com. And that's R-I-T-A, M as in Mary, I-L-I-O-S, at tampabay, one word, dot R-R, dot com. Very nice, very nice. And did you give your phone number? 727-860-5675. Perfect. And if you want to get this book, this is this is mind-blowing. It's an awesome, awesome book. Tools for Thank Transformation. So what a great way to get in on this book. Start the new year off. No resolutions. Just right. setting intentions. Exactly. Rita, I want to thank you so much. Oh, We're going to have you back thank again you. as always. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for joining us today on Primetime TV Show. We will see you next Monday, same time, same place. We'll have some tips for the new year and some of the different things that we're going to be rolling out. And you just never know what you're going to hear right here on Primetime. Thanks for being with us today. You have a beautiful week. We'll see you next time.